good morning dear friends how are you all hope you are all fine this is your english teacher mr ismail welcome back to our english grammar class and the topic which we have started few days ago the topic is reported speech whereas in the previous class of ours we have discussed about the interrogative sentences which are there in the direct speech and we have changed those interrogative sentences from direct speech to indirect speech one thing we had noticed in the previous class in case if the direct speech sentences carries interrogative sentences when we are changing it into indirect speech it will convert assertive sentences question to assertive okay then whereas we have noticed there are two different types of interrogative sentences one is wh questions which carries that as a conjunction from direct speech to indirect speech when we have changed and another one is yes or no type of questions and always this yes or no type of questions begins with helping verbs am are were was is was was then again shall should can could may might such kind of a helping verbs it carries so then we have noticed one thing if it is yes or no type of a questions in the direct speech when we are changing it into indirect speech definitely it will not carry that as a conjunction so in place of that we have used if or whether as a conjunction which is connecting in between connecting the connection in between of two different sentences about this all in the last class of ours so very clearly we have discussed whereas in the today's class we are going to concentrate towards the imperative sentences in reported speech in the initial days of our reported speech we have already discussed very clearly about the imperative sentences when we were discussing about the tenses and the sentences there also we have studied about the imperative sentence and in the day 1 when we were discussing about the rules of our direct speech to indirect speech there also we have discussed about the imperative sentences rules but even though just for glancing out or brushing the mind here are certain rules i have written on the board which we can remember for a while and we will go for solving the direct speech sentences of a imperative sentence to then indirect speech of imperative okay so let's uh, have a glance towards the certain rules so rule number 1 it says very clearly always imperative sentences carries two as a conjunction okay the most important uh, rule it is always whenever we are changing from the direct speech to indirect speech or even though in the direct speech the two as a conjunction we are using uh, not if or whether nor even that as a conjunction so here in the imperative sentences if or whether will be cancelled that will also be cancelled he said that or he said he told me that so earlier what we were using that it is cancelled so in imperative sentence instead of using that as a conjunction we have to use to as a conjunction remember the rule number 1 let's concentrate towards rule number 2 so imperative direct speech will start with the first form of a verb it is always starting with the v1 imperative direct speech whatever will be there it will be in the v1 itself and the most important when we are changing imperative sentence even in the indirect speech also it will be carrying the same v1 itself so verb form will not change in the imperative sentence hope you are remembering the things so this is the rule number 2 rule number 
imperative sentences will be in ordering or it will be commanding or it will be giving suggestions or it will be requesting or it will be warning or it will be threatening threatening in a sense of uh, uh, just uh, you just shut your mouth or else i'll kill you so such kind of the threatens and all will come now so that all okay then here in imperative sentence the rule number four is much important one what it is always the subject will be hidden in this we cannot find a subject here subject will be there but this subject always will be it will be in the hidden form it will be soon after the verb or it will be hidden in the verb form itself hope you have remembered all the rules of imperative sentence let me recall one more time always the imperative sentences carries to as a conjunction t o 2 not t w o or not t double o t o 2 to as a conjunction okay next imperative direct speech will start with first form of a verb or we can call v1 next imperative sentence will be in ordering using in ordering commanding giving suggestions or warning or it will be for requesting or threatening something hope you are understanding and the last and the for most or the most important rule is here in the imperative sentence always the subject will be hidden let's start some of the examples so that easy it will be easy for us uh, for understanding all the rules in a easy manner let's go with the example number 1 I said to you get out of the class see first let us try to understand the nature of the sentence I said to you get out of the class so what sort of a sentence it is whether the sentence of order or the sentence of commanding or the sentence of a suggestions or the sentence of requesting or the sentence of a warning or giving a threat that we have to understand so when we are going through the sentence so one thing very easily we can understand this yes definitely this sentence it is in the ordering it is in the ordering so then he is saying that i said to you get out of the class i said to you get out of the class here we'll go with the one thing my dear children so to as a conjunction it is been used and this conjunction it is not certainly important for us because this conjunction it is in the direct speech even in indirect speech also the to as a conjunction we are using and look at here get out it is in the v1 okay get it is in the v1 then this v1 it carries even the subject also i said to you get out of the class so here i said to you you get out of the class if i am saying like this then even though it is correct only because here the subject will be hidden with the verb okay so let's change it out into indirect speech i ordered you to get out of the class see the to as a conjunction we have used then i ordered you it is one sentence right i ordered you it is one sentence then get out of the class it is another sentence so overall we can find two different sentences are there one sentence is saying i order you second sentence is saying get out of the class so where the two different sentences we need to add under one platform we have to bring it out under one platform so for bringing these two different sentences under one platform we have to use conjunction so the conjunction for these two sentences will be that sentence number 1 and the sentence number 2 i order you to get out of the class it is in the indirect speech hope you are understanding the things so let's go towards the example number 2 Ekta said to me please help me 
Ekta said to me, please help me. So let us try to understand the nature of sentence. In which form it will be fit. Whether it will be fit in ordering or it will be fit in commanding. It will be fit for suggestion or it will be fit for requesting, warning or threatening. Let's see the question. Ekta said to me, please help me see the sentence so obviously we can say that it is in the requesting form so we will change it out into indirect speech in such a manner ekta requested if it is in the requesting in a sense we have to use it as a requested if it is ordering it is we have to use ordered okay ekta requested me to help her. So here you may get a little confusion my dear children. Ekta said to me, please help me. Sir, in this, the negative, when you have changed from direct speech to indirect speech, you haven't used please. Why sir? The question may come in your mind. My dear children, the please, it is not a part of the sentence. Please, it is not at all a part of a sentence here. So, please is the word which is emphasizing the sentence. Please is a word which is emphasizing the sentence, but it is not a part of a sentence. Nor even it is a verb. Nor even it is a verb. So, what we have discussed, the rule is saying very clearly, imperative sentence, always it begins with a verb. So always the imperative sentence, it is beginning with the V1 or verb it is starting. So please it is not at all a verb. So then what we have to understand, if it is not a verb, then it is emphasizing. So soon after this, please, the next one, what is there? Verb. Help is a form of a verb. So help me. So then we can understand that please it is not at all a, the verb here. It is not at all a part of sentence. It is just emphasizing. We can avoid this please. We can leave the please and go ahead. Ekta requested me to help her. Help me will convert into her because who is me refers to Ekta. She is requesting to whom? Me in a sense. It may be XYZ person to whom she is going to talk. Hope you are understanding. And one more thing. One more rule you have to understand my dear children. Always the imperative sentences will be connecting with a second person. Always imperative sentences will be connecting with a second person. First person is going to speak to the person one who is standing to him. Always in imperative sentence, listeners are the victims, I can say. Okay. On entire the imperative sentences will be constructed on the listeners, second person. Not about the third person, neither about the first person. It is with a second person. So here, Ekta said to me, please help me. It is in the direct speech. In indirect, it can become Ekta requested me to help her. So, to as a conjunction, we have to use. Right? Even I can say this sentence in a different way also. Ekta pleaded me. We can use like that. Please, it is that. No, that we can use in such a manner. Ekta pleaded me to help her. Right? We'll go for the next sentence. Turn off the TV, mother told him. Turn off the TV, mother told him. So do you think the sentence is in order or it's in request or it is in suggestions or it is in the warning, threatening or what? So if you are reading the sentence very clearly, then we can understand this is not at all in request. The mother is saying that turn off the TV. It is definitely in order. So here you can understand the things. Turn off the TV. Mother told him. We will change it out into indirect speech in such a manner. His mother told. We can add his here. Or else if you don't like to add his. 
just for an emphasizing the sentence i have used his even if you don't want to use his you may use uh, the directly mother told also you may use right mother or his mother told him to turn off the tv then here you may get a confusion my dear children sir as you are saying that it is in the ordering then you could use the word that mother ordered him you could use but why you use the told just for an extra knowledge my dear children sometimes when the ordering will also be there or the harsh tone will come so there we can use a told as a verb we can use out here told also we can use right need not to be worry only about the ordered 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 order. no we can use even the told also in some time when we find that a person is ordering me a person is uh, talking to me very harshly his tone was a uh, very harsh so then we can use the word that told in case if his tone is a uh, very soft and all he said okay in case if is if the mother is uh, uh, requesting or if she is using the word that in a soft manner we can use the word that said if it is in the harsh way the tone of a mother if it is very harsh she is ordering she is commanding then i can use the word told also okay turn off the tv mother told him we can use his mother or her mother or you may not be use this his or her directly you can come for a mother also his mother told him to this is the important for us to as a conjunction his mother told him to turn off the tv hope you are understanding the things we'll go for the example number 4 don't feed the animal don't feed the animal the zoo keeper told us don't feed the animal the zoo keeper told us so you can understand here zoo keeper in a sense the person one who is taking care of a zoo so we'll change it out into indirect speech but before that let us try to be think that this sentence belongs belongs to which form whether it will be in the ordering commanding suggesting or requesting or warning threatening or instructing that we'll see so here don't feed the animal the zoo keeper told us we'll change it into indirect speech the zoo, zoo keeper instructed us because it is an instruction okay the zoo keeper if it is the zoo keeper's voice is quite harsh let us imagine like that okay we may write like that also if the voice if you are imagining the voice is really very harsh one then we can use the word that the zoo keeper told us not to feed the animals we can use like that or if it is a little soft one in a instructing manner if it is used then we can use the zoo keeper instructed us not to feed the animals the zoo keeper instructed us not to feed the animals hope you are understanding this sentence it is a little different from the other sentences why it is different in a sense because this sentence is in the negative imperative sentence it is in the negative imperative form so don't do not did not so such kind of the uh, verbs will come out no no not never neither so such all the verbs such all the things we can understand that it is in the negative form so negative imperative of direct speech will change it into indirect speech don't feed the animal the zoo keeper told us in indirect speech it will be the zoo keeper instructed us not to feed here we can use not we need not to use about uh, don't okay not to feed the animals hope you are understanding let's see the example number 5 her father said you should take your studies more seriously her father said you should take your studies more seriously it is in the direct speech what do you think of this sentence whether it is suggestion or the instructions or what her father said you should take care of your studies 
in such a manner if the father is been warning if the father is saying then definitely it will be in the instructions okay we'll go with that her father instructed to her she should take care of her studies more seriously you can use okay her father instructed to her she should take her studies more seriously hope you are understanding here the few changes we can find out your will be there no so that your we can understand it will be converting into her your will be changing into her then remaining as it is itself her father said to you her father said you should take your studies more seriously in an indirect speech it will become her father instructed to her she should take her studies more seriously hope you are understanding so in the next class we will continue with uh, some more examples which are related to different sentences and all so rather than these things in the after finishing that class it means after finishing the tomorrow's class the day after tomorrow's class i mean to say from monday onwards uh, we'll go with the topic called finite and infinite form of verbs so please stay safe at your home and uh, take care of your parent take care of your health also okay fine thank you